Hello and welcome to Run Testers, my name's Nick and this is our full review of the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 2. So the Nitro Elite 2 is one of three carbon racing shoes in Puma's range. It's the cheapest of the three, though. It costs £175 in the UK or $200 in the US, which makes it significantly cheaper than the Fast Forward, which is the short distance racing shoe, or the Fast Style, which is billed more as the long distance racing shoe. This is more of a, a general purpose racing shoe. It's still pretty light, though. It's 227 grams or 8 ounces in a UK size 9, although that is a fair bit heavier than the original Nitro Elite. It's still got an 8mm drop, uh, and the stack height is the same at 36mm at the heel and 28mm at the forefoot. Like I so the shoes gained a little weight and some of that is down to the fact that the upper has a little bit more padding especially around the heel there the tongue feels ever so slightly thicker to me as well you've also got some power tape elements in the upper so around the medial side of the shoe there and around the forefoot to add a little bit of structure to what is still a very lightweight mono mesh upper but just with those added elements now to hold the foot in place a bit more securely and add a little bit more comfort. You've got a Nitro Elite midsole, two layers of that. It's a nitrogen infused PIBA based foam with a carbon plate that runs the full length of the shoe. In the Nitro Elite 2, this is Puma's power plate, which is now used pretty much across their current lineup as opposed to the Inno plate, which was used in the DV8 Nitro Elite 1, which had a fork design, whereas the power plate is filled in at the front there. Obviously it works in the same way by loading up with energy and helping to propel you on your way during your faster runs. You've got more of a four foot rocker shape than on the original DV8 Nitro Elite to provide a more aggressive and efficient toe off uh, when you're using the Nitro Elite 2. You've got a lovely Puma Grip outsole there with great coverage on the forefoot and these two strips at the back. You've almost got little teardrop shaped lugs at the forefoot and the outsole is a little bit thicker than on the Nitro Elite 1 which again explains some of the weight gain but should give you a little bit more durability and the grip as you'd expect from a Puma shoe is absolutely excellent. Okay I'm now joined by Tom and first we're going to talk about the fit of the shoe. Uh, Tom True to size for this shoe, or what do you think? Yes, true to size. Uh, I definitely wouldn't size up or down in this shoe. Fit me perfectly, like a glove. I'd say the same thing. Uh, really comfortable fit. Got a little bit of extra padding at the back there, which holds the heel a bit tight in the first version. I think it's slightly roomier than the first one, which was quite a tight fit, but true to size, certainly. All right, on to the run test. Uh, Tom, you went straight out and raced in this shoe, right? How, how's your experience of it been in general? Uh, positive. Um, I, yeah, I went out and did a 10k down uh, down on the coast, um, and I enjoyed it for that. I think it, it it's definitely a very fast, enjoyable, nippy shoe that uh, really is conducive to those. Well, that 10k event I did, it was I think it was pretty much the, the perfect distance for it. Um, I've also done a few other runs where I've not been racing in this shoe, uh, and I think I went up to 21k in it for like a training run. Um, and I think it, I think it was fine for that, but I definitely didn't think it offered any major benefits for it either. There were, there were shoes I'd much rather wear if I was going out for a training run. So it definitely fits nicely as a fast, shorter distance race shoe for me, as opposed to something that I'd use for anything else. Probably wouldn't use it for a marathon or anything like that. I just don't think it has the um, level of cushioning and um, bounce and stuff that I normally want from a from a race shoe. Oh, fair enough. See, that's interesting. So I, I think it's really worse <laughs> like, um, because it, it is that little bit lower stacked and uh, than most common super shoes. It's a bit more grounded, which means you do lose a lot of bounce. And I agree that I don't think it'll be my first choice for racing long distances. I think it loses out to the more propulsive, like impressive shoes out there. But I think its strength is versatility. So I, I did a run with it, you know, here in London. Then I went away for the weekend, and I was only had hand luggage. And I thought I'm just going to take this shoe because uh, I want to do a park run. And I don't want to run that fast. And actually, I find this great for all kinds of running. I was out in Poland and it's very icy everywhere and I just used it for everything so I did like a kind of easy relaxed run on the Thursday did the park on the Friday did the park run uh, ran fast there fast as, I, fast as I was expecting and I actually think over those shorter races it's quite up, like I say I think it's up there I think it's not far off the performance of the best shoes out there gap I think is more on those longer races and on the Sunday I just did uh, about 15k easy to kind of yeah easy easy pace in a forest <laughs> and it was just icy woodland trails and I thought well this will be fine on it and it was completely fine because the grip is so good the shoe is quite balanced and grounded I don't think I have a problem on corners there's no instability there and it, it almost does to me feel more like a trainer racer like a you know really good all-rounder shoe that you can just use for everything um, because I do think it lacks that absolute top end performance that you do get from the best carbon shoes but yeah I found it really versatile really comfortable just mooching about in it <laughs> um yeah um and so and also it looks like this. So I was happy, you know, traveling in it. it looks looks great, doesn't it? Um, it's a nice looking shoe. 
<laughs> but what I did definitely feel like, because I actually felt quite similar to the first Deviate Nitro Elite, um, I thought that was more racy than this, and it's lighter. And I, I am a little bit disappointed this is a bit heavier, because the Detroit Nitro, Nitro Elite was like the lightest carbon shoe and great, great grip, very nippy for 5K, that kind of thing. And this now is more middle of the pack on weight, and it feels a bit more built up. And as a result, I do think it feels a bit more like a training shoe that races very well as well, but you can use a bit of everything. But yeah, on racing, I think it'd be comfortable enough for the long distance, for sure. But I do think you lose a bit of punch compared to other shoes when you go for like marathons. Yeah, I think the thing about the uh, where it sits, the Puma's got an interesting range in that it doesn't have a very logical range like uh, a lot of other uh, shoe brands where you can sort of see what the different shoes are for. In in the Puma range, this is probably the most well, the most likely to be used for a marathon in comparison to some of the other race shoes that have got like the the fast R and the the fast forward. Um, and I think it, it, it probably is a, a good shoe for that. But I think for me, it's just, it has got cushioning in, you can kind of feel it, but it's definitely a bit lean on cushioning in comparison to some other super shoes out there. Um, I enjoyed it on that race. Um, when I was training in it, I, I didn't dislike it, um, but it just it just didn't feel to me like a comfortable training shoe. It felt more like a lean, fast shoe, uh, which I don't normally like to, to run in um, when I'm training. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. It is interesting. I, 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 I worry that it will get passed over um, because it isn't the best carbon race shoe out there. It's it's a quite good value. It does a lot of stuff quite well, but that's quite a weird position for a carbon shoe in a way because they're so targeted normally. Um, so I wonder if it will pivot to being more positioned as a training partner to the other shoes. But then we'll talk about the verdict when it comes to the performance versus things like the fast R and the fast forward. It's all very close. So it's not like you'd say this is a cheaper, you know, right, you know, version of that shoe. It's a different shoe, and I find the ride of this very natural whereas the, the other shoes in Puma's range are a bit more unnatural but in quite a good way at times so yeah I think it's it's yeah. quite interesting uh, <laughs> I, yeah yeah I, I think I think if you got the shoe and you went running training fast in it you'd be very very happy with it uh, I do think it's a very good shoe for that and I think Puma's really interesting in that they've sort of the, 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 the shoes that they're releasing for their like performance level stuff for the race level stuff they're almost saying we we're not we're not trying to do what everyone else is doing we're focused on this very specific type of runner where it's a little bit leaner a little bit you know less um fancy when it comes to foams and things not saying the phone's not fancy but it's less you know energetic um and i like that i I have a lot of respect for puma for that because they're really sort of honing in on, on what they want to do and if you're the type of runner that doesn't want loads of cushioning and you know like a alpha fly or something Puma's probably a, a good bet to go for. Yeah, there is that. Although I would love to see what a 40 millimeter version of this shoe did feel like, like you know, a bit more yeah. stacker because the, the foam is great. Like that Nitro Elite foam, I enjoyed mm-hmm. it in lots of shoes. It is bouncy. It's bouncier in things like the Fast Forward, which has that very strange design. So it's interesting they've kept it lower stack. But yeah, it ends up being like a good shoe. But war- in the carbon shoe market, yeah, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? You can't really just be a good shoe anymore. Yeah. <laughs> On to the verdict then. Uh, so Deviant Nitro Elite 2, a shoe I think both of us quite like. Uh, I do like it. I, very, I warmed to it a lot. I spent a whole weekend with just this shoe and I really liked it. But um, it's a hard one to recommend in a way because it, it doesn't really sit in the natural order of things, right Tom? Yeah, I'd agree. It's a tricky one. If, you, if you're a runner that is looking for a carbon plate super shoe and you've got your sights set on you know, what we expect from carbon plate super shoes these days, I think if you got this you'd probably be, I would say disappointed, but it's not gonna it's not like the other carbon plate super shoes and that's not a bad thing overall it's cheaper than those um the, the, the majority of them but i think that because it's because it's focused on the very it's it's got more of a sort of niche use as, uh, in comparison to those shoes that it's just not as applicable to to everyone um so yeah i think it's a fantastic shoe um if if, if it works for you but i yeah it's very difficult to to say buy this over you know vapor flies and things like that yeah exactly especially when the vapor flies often on sale i think if you're looking for a bit more value from your carbon shoe then this is an interesting option for me because i do think it's a great first off shoe i'm very happy running in it every day liked it a lot if you want a very top end trainer racer in terms of price then i think it's a good option um and you can use it for lots of things and you if mainly if you stick to shorter races you're not losing a huge amount of performance compared to the other shoes but i, I still would think the vapor fly is better but yeah if you're someone who's looking for pure performance from your carbon shoe which is what you mostly would look for from a carbon shoe it isn't quite up there as the best of them it's just more 
rounded shoe and it has got that outstanding grip and maybe if you're constantly racing on icy pavements in poland um this would, this would be a fantastic option because i would really really wouldn't have trusted many other shoes in that environment yeah, um, you really can't unstate the, how good this grip is on these shoes in comparison to a lot of other brands it's just they're, they're really hit the nail on the head but it's got a bit of a thicker layer on it which is um, interesting but now puma's range on really confusing we're gonna do a full video on this to try and really nail down what these different shoes do but you've got the fast forward the short distance 5k 10k racer lighter than this uh, you've got the Fast R, which is billed as a propulsive racer, is how they but it's got a slightly more stack than the Deviant Nitro Elite, but it's still not 40 mil. It's got a more propulsive, like fast transition because of the mixture of foams used on it. And this almost just sits as the this does everything, I think. It's like it's the more like oh, it's the it's the carbon sheet you can kind of use for anything, 5k to a marathon. If you're looking at Puma's range, what you're gonna buy? Um you know, which do you think makes the most sense? <laughs> I think that uh, this, I, I out of all of those shoes, I would go for this. I think it's, I think it's a great, the best option um, for pretty much m most, if not the majority. Yeah, well, the, the, yeah, most runners will find this shoe the best one to go for. I think those other ones are a little bit specific to certain types of running, uh, and yeah, you, you, if you get hold of those ones, it doesn't work for you. You probably won't use them. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the fast. I think the fast forward is a better short distance racer, but you know you've got to really be honed in on those short distances to choose that over this because this is also a very good short distance racer. Fast R has got a great, very fast ride. I prefer the feel of the shoe. It feels a bit more natural. It's a lot cheaper, and I think again the performance isn't that different. The other one to throw in, obviously, is the original version of this. If you can pick that up for going, it's going for a song by all accounts these days for under hundred quid. That's a brilliant shoe. It's ridiculously lightweight. It's got great grip. It's got you know same stack height as this. The I don't think it's quite as aggressive off the toes as this shoe, but it's still very aggressive, and I've run far, very fast 5Ks in that shoe for me. So if you, someone kept saying it was 85 quid the other day. Go, go and bag the original Deviant Nitro Elite if you're, gonna, if you're looking at mm. Puma's range. But Well, yeah, and I would say for that price, it's a fantastic... Well, for that price, it's fantastic for a bit of anything, but um, it's a great training partner, probably, for faster training sessions if you're using a, another race shoe for, you know, super shoe for your races. It does work very well alongside that because... It is fast and nippy, but you may want to just go for another race shoe for your big races. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing I'd say about the shoe, it is if you can get it for that price, having it available for the odd icy or mixed terrain race where it's not like proper trails, but you know you are going on some light gravel and things like that, whereas but icy, it's it's about as good as it gets for that kind of terrain. That, that as a racing shoe, and if you're someone who's on those races a lot, which people are, then having it around if you can pick it up in a deal is not a bad idea. But yeah, pure performance. I'd be looking elsewhere. But there are some interesting aspects to the Deviate Nitro Elite 2 that make it quite an, an interesting shoe to maybe have around the house. So that's it. That is our review of the Deviate Nitro Elite 2. A dive into the comments and let us know what you think of this shoe. Is it one you're interested in picking up or does it just not really appeal? Or are you sticking with some of the bigger guns in the carbon shoe market? Or are you tempted more by Puma's more novel carbon racing shoes? Please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell and we'll see you next time.